did you know that when you place faith in Jesus Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit of God? I'm asking you, did you know it? Listen, the Holy Spirit is not a ghost or a wind or a fire or a dove. He's often symbolized by those things, but y'all, that ain't who he is. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Not third because he is least in value, just third because he's the last to be revealed to us in the pages of Scripture. But all of the fullness, all of the power, all of the glory, all of the grandeur of God the Father is in the person of the Holy Spirit. That means when you place faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit takes up residence in you, that means that all of the grandeur, all of the goodness, all of the authority of God the Father now lives on the inside of you. And he doesn't just want to be present. He wants to be public. That's why you get his fruit. Because that means that when your patience has run out with that person, you ain't got no more patience. He gives you the fruit of the Spirit so that you can have patience that goes beyond your natural capacity to have patience. It means when you do not have any self-discipline, uh, the Holy Spirit, the fruit of God's Spirit means that you are able to restrain yourself. When in your flesh, you know you are not able to restrain yourself. Not only do you have the fruit of the Spirit, that's public, you also have the gifts of the Spirit so that you can operate in a way that publicly edifies the body of Christ and builds people up and encourages them and stirs them on. It's God's public activity in your life. It's called the manifest presence of God. The person of the Holy Spirit enables us as the body of Christ to walk in a manner worthy of the calling by which we have been called. It's the presence of God on our life. It marks us he is the one that makes it so that God is not just in us. He is on us. Where people can see a public demonstration of the power of God just because we walked into the room on our jobs and in your university and walking down the corridor of your high school campus and in that organization in which you're involved and in that endeavor in which you are sowing all of your gifts and your talents and your creative abilities you've given it everything that you have the Holy Spirit is the one that when his presence is upon your life makes it so that when you walk into the room people get a public demonstration of Jesus Christ because of the words you say because of the choices that you make because of the integrity with which you stand because of the character with which you walk because of the way that you are able to bring Christ's love to bear with every person even the difficult person that you are able to love and give generously and sow yourself into every good deed to which God calls you not by your own power and not by your own might but by the Spirit of God who operates not only in your life but upon your life it's called favor favor is God's presence on your life favor is what opens up doors that no man can shut favor is what puts you in positions that that nobody really thinks you're qualified for Favor is what enables you to do things that you know are beyond your capacity, but God has positioned you and placed you and prepared a way for you. That's favor on your life. And if you have the Holy Spirit of God, you have favor. You have favor. I want to tell you this before I close. If there is one thing that invites um, the favor of God on your life, of course, if you've received Christ as Savior, He is in you, but I'm talking about where He's on you. Visible, public, people can sense the presence of God because you have peace that passes understanding. Like, because they know what you're going through in your life and they can't figure out how you still got sanity with what you got going on in your life. I'm talking about like that. There is one thing that invites the presence of God on you like that. You ready? Here it is. Holiness. You gotta live holy. You gotta decide to lay aside every sin and the weight which so easily entangles you so that you can run with endurance the race that has been set before you. 
You can be in your war room praying against the schemes of the devil till you are blue in the face. But if you leave your prayer closet and still live a raggedy, wayward lifestyle, then the enemy you just prayed against will still make himself at home in your life. You gotta live holy. I'm talking about integrity, y'all. I'm talking about being the same in the dark as you are in the light. I'm talking about character. Where we don't just come in here on a Monday night and then Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday night and have such a great time hearing about the promises of God and the truths of God. And then we walk out of these doors and nobody aligns their life in a way that is actually congruent with everything that you're... Listen, you're getting ready to get it this week. Every single night this week, God is going to pour something into your life. He's going to give you clear direction. You're going to sense a ping, a conviction of the Holy Spirit in regards to something that one of these teachers that the Lord has entrusted to you and you to them this week. There's going to be something that the Lord is going to give to your life and you're going to have to decide up front whether or not you are willing, whether or not I'm willing to align my life with the truth that God gives us this week. And to the extent that we're willing to say yes and bring ourselves into alignment, that's holiness. That's the extent to which we will see him go public in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of just having private Jesus. I mean, I'm so grateful that he's present, but I want him public. I want what I get on the pew to come to the pavement of my experience that when I walk down the road of life, I... I walk with him, I see him move, I experience him. I want that holy anticipation that comes because I'm eager to see what God's going to do today. I want to wake up with holy expectation that today I'm going to see a move of God. Today I have expectation that he is coming to do something that is far beyond anything that I can ask or think. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. To him be the glory in this church now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Amen.